Hi, Yarn of Bees. It's me, Sandy. Oh, I feel like every time I get in front of this camera, I have bad news. Um, I, yeah. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I've had so many of you that have been supporting my family um, in many different ways. And I think that you guys have a right to know what's happening. Um, my sister, as you know, in my previous videos, actually, yeah, she hasn't been doing very well. Um, for my, for my new viewers, um, maybe you don't know about this. For all my OGs that have, have been walking through this with me, this is an update for you. And this is probably a new surprise for my new people. But um, about two months ago, my sister was rushed to the hospital and was diagnosed with Wagner's disease, cerebral reg, reg, mm, la, 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 la. sorry, I haven't slept much, cerebral Wagner's, which is extremely rare. Uh, <clears throat> so she's had two brain surgeries um, to one to release the pressure in her brain and the other was to do a biopsy on the mass that was found at the base of her skull uh, and that's how they found out that it was Wagner's. Um, she was home for the last couple of weeks and she was doing really well. She was able to walk around with a um, with a walker she was starting to make her own breakfast, um, get some things in order. Um, you know, she was talking to people on the phone. Everything looked good. And then in the last three days that I was there, she started to take a downward spiral really fast. I had this sneaky suspicion that the fluid had built up in her brain again. But I'm no doctor, right? So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, she could barely walk on her own. She was really, really shaky. She, um, I, I got her into the shower. Uh, I could barely get her out of the shower. But, um... I started doing some housework and whatever and she was sitting in the chair and she had this wild look in her eyes just like just her eyes were big and she was I don't know it was just the most bizarre look and I I thought okay something's wrong um, her shaking got worse she didn't have a fever but uh, she was supposed to go in for her IV infusion of rituximab um, yesterday. Her husband had to carry her there. And when she was there, he went to park the car. Uh, and when he came back, he couldn't find her. Nobody knew where she was. And he went into the bathroom and found her collapsed on the floor. They rushed her to... Victoria General Hospital again. They did a CT scan and they found out that not only was the pressure built up in her brain, um, but they suspect that the fluid surrounding her brain is infected. <clears throat> she went in for emergency surgery last night at about 11 o'clock, 11.30 last night. And they put in... Um, another tube in her head, in the top of her head, to drain the fluid. The fluid's been taken to the lab to find out if it is an infection, like they suspect. We'll probably get the results back either late today or early tomorrow. If she does have an infection, they're going to try and clear up the infection, and then she has to go in for another surgery to have a tube put in her brain that's permanent 
and the tube will go from her brain all the way down into her chest and she will have a bag that it um, drains into. If it isn't an infection, which they're very doubtful, um, then she's going to be going in right away and having this done. Now this surgery has its own complications. Um, but anyways, we just found out that, you know, there is a isolated case of Corona's virus um, on the island in Victoria. I think it's a 80 or uh, a 68 year old guy or something who's been quarantined in his house. So they don't think that it's out there. But, you know, of course, here we are, you know, really nervous because she has a hole in her head that goes directly to her brain. Um, it's not in the hospital. We've been assured that. So now it's just a waiting game. Um, she's not responsive. Um, when they flash the light in her eyes, there's no response whatsoever. Her pupils aren't dilating at all. Uh, but she, I think she can hear us because um, when they ask her to like lift her leg and lift her arm and whatever, she can do it. It takes her a while, but she can do it. So I think she can still hear us, but she's just, she can't talk. She can't open her eyes. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thinking there was an animal in, in the room with me, but there's nothing here. <laughs> oh, that, that brings me on to something else, a little happier. Um, when I came home from my sister's place, I was home for one, one night before I had to uh, go rushing to the hospital yesterday. I got home at like four in the morning. So, so I'm, I slept for a few hours today, so I'm a little out of it. So if I'm all over the place, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, so anyways, last week when I came home, George and I went to bed and um, George felt this weight on the end of the bed. And he's just like, oh, the cat's there, the dog's there or whatever. And then we heard the, the jump off the bed onto the floor and then the, the paws going down the um, bedroom into the hallway. I shot up. I was like, what was that? George says, don't worry about it. It was just the cat or the dog. I says, George, the dog is sitting beside me and the cat is in between us. It wasn't them. And he was, then he shot up. <laughs> he was like, okay, um, who's in the house? What's in the house? <laughs> so he went hunting around and couldn't find anything. Doors were locked. Everything was closed. But before that, the cat freaked out and uh, came running into the bed, started doing circles on the bed and then underneath the covers. And she just was losing her mind. So we thought, mm, okay, whatever. And then this happened. So some of you may know or understand that um, animals are very susceptible to, not susceptible, they're very aware of spirits and whatnot. So our guesstimate is that that was Odie. And Odie came to visit us and jumped up on the bed and then tootled off down the hall. So I usually hear stuff like this all the time. Like I'm, I'm very aware of my surroundings like that. And for me to try and explain it to somebody else, they're just like, mm -hmm, yeah, whatever. Well, George witnessed it and experienced it. So he was just like, okay, so there's something to this. <laughs> so, but it was a pretty cool feeling to know that, um, that she was here. 
So that was that was good news. Took her long enough to come back home. <laughs> she took the long route, I think. <laughs> so that sound that I heard might have been her. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, made another sweater. This is what I was making while uh, I was at Charlene's taking care of her. It's uh, a really nice blue. And then this is kind of a, a gray blue um, uh, yarn. This was also the, all the Premier Basics yarn. So I finished that one. I finished another one. That, remember the one I was talking about for all you OGs out there? I was telling you that I was making a cardigan from uh, the Pepper Ash Latte cake in August when we went to the Dragon Boat Festival and I couldn't find another pepper ash and it was discontinued and yada 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 and I thought well what am I going to use to finish this thing well when I cleaned up my my room here out pops this pepper ash and I had one ball left and I was so excited so I finished the sweater and I gave it to my sister's best friend Ellen Ellen has been at the hospital every day with her and um, giving us updates when we're not there and she's just she's been by her side the whole time because she only lives 10 minutes away from the hospital so if anything was to happen she's the first one that would get there so I made this sweater for her and I'll see if I can get video of it um, Everything was so rushed yesterday. Um, oh, it was so rushed yesterday that we never got a chance to um, to bring it down for her. So I'm going to be doing that. So I'll see if I can get some pictures of it before I give it to her. But it turned out really nice. It's really nice and soft. and I think she's going to like it. So anyways... Um, I'm sure there's other stuff I wanted to talk about. I've been watching all of your videos and I had so many comments to make about them, but they're all just gone. I just, I don't know. <laughs> At one of these days, I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to come on here and be my happy, joyful self again and, uh, and entertain you guys. <laughs> But right now, um, not so much. So I haven't controlled. Oh, I have been crocheting a lot, but I feel like I'm not getting anything done. You know, so I did get this done though. Um, this is a cowl. Oops. Oh. So that's the cowl. And the matching hat. Uh, I did the bean stitch with that. So I might be able to do a tutorial on that one at some point. Uh, oh, Billy. Thank you so, so much. I got the bag today. Oh, I should have brought it here to show you guys. Hold on a second. So I got a billy bag, guys. It's box bottom. Isn't that gorgeous? Ugh. Isn't that beautiful? So the reason why I got this bag was because this flower, oops, hang on, let me fold this over. This flower right here, this one, we call those morning glories. And it reminded me so much of my grandmother. And the reason why is because I used to stick my nose in the middle of the flower and I would go and I would breathe in real tight, real hard and it would stick to my nose. <laughs> And I'd walk around with this flower stuck on my nose. So, so my, and my grandma, grandma used to think I was absolutely out of my mind, which I probably was. <laughs> but, 
So when I saw that, I was like, I have to have that bag. So thank you so much, Billy. She, she got her new her labels on there, you know, and um, the inside is that color to go with the all the leaves on that side. So it's just beautiful. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to get a lot of use out of this, especially in the next while while I'm sitting in the hospital. I ran out of the house so fast yesterday that I didn't take any crochet or anything. So sitting at the hospital was just like, Michelle brought hers. She brought her crochet. And then she says, oh, I feel bad. I can't crochet in front of you because you don't have yours. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So anyway. Okay, guys. I think that's all I have to say. Um, yeah. I'll keep you guys updated on what's happening. And thank you so, so much, everybody, for... I put, um, put something out on Facebook uh, in my Crochet A site about what's going on. And a, a lot of you jumped on there already and said, you know, that you're giving prayers and whatnot. So thank you so much. It, it really does mean the world to us to know. And it means a lot to me to know that you guys are there and you're, you're with me. I can feel you. Um, <clears throat> and this whole coronavirus thing uh, hurts my head. Really, it does. Um, and now Stitch Fest might be, uh, might be affected because of it. So uh, Rosie says that she's not going to cancel Stitch Fest, but um, a lot of people have said that they're still going to go, so I don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> We're kind of wavering. We don't know. I, I won't know until, um, until her surgery, next surgery, and how she's doing as to whether or not I'm going to be going. So it's kind of up in the air right now. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping I can go. I may need to go just to get my mind off of things for a little bit. But um, anyway, okay, guys, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And thank you for being there with me. I, I need you guys. I really do. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Mwah.